us when we party online, we want to have the best darn party we can. I know it, me too, myself included. And I'm constantly wanting to learn the tips and the tricks that those that have successful online parties are, are doing. I constantly want to hear, well, what is this person doing? What's that person doing? And so last week I reached out to Jerry and I said, Jerry, my friend, you know, you have sold, she asked me to correct the numbers that I shared because I was wrong in my numbers. I, I apologize. I said that she has sold six, sorry, 200, not 600,000, 200,000. I said she sold 200,000 her first two weeks of, um, of uh, August. No, sorry. Her first, sorry. What am I saying? I said that she had sold 200,000 her first six months here. That's what I said in the post that I wrote this morning. So I was wrong. She has sold $181,000 in her first six months here. Okay, so I was off by 19,000. But if you do the math, by the end of August, she will be at 200,000. So I guess maybe she will have done it in seven months, not six or whatever the, whatever the numbers are. It's something crazy, all right, friends? And what's even crazier with that? If you think that's crazy, put crazy in the comments because it's crazy, but it's possible because she's doing it. And Jerry, Jerry is... Jerry will tell you, she's just a normal Arkansas loving gal, okay? Like what makes her maybe not normal is she um, she goes after lots of no's to get the yeses. She's not afraid of no's. You know, many may be afraid of no's. She's not afraid of no's. Um, she sets really big goals for herself. She shared a few with me. You know, a lot are, afraid, many are afraid to set a big goal because well, what if I don't reach it? Well, but what if you get close to it, friends? Like, you know what I mean? That's how you move along. So anyway, she earns at the level that she's a sales VP. So at, at here at Park Lane from um, division and up, you can earn between 40 and 50% of everything you sell. At senior division, it's 45 to 50% um, to senior division and up. So, and she is recruited every single month. So she has earned 50% of everything of what she sold, 50%. So I'm going to let y'all do the math on how much she's earning on her sales alone. Okay. So for the person that's sitting here, maybe one of you is thinking this today, as you sit in here listening, maybe you're thinking, you know, oh my gosh, like, We've got something that's just landed in our lap and it's a big expense and it's this or that. And how are we going to pay for it? You're going to do, you can, you can immediately start doing more online parties to pay for it. Or I really want to make this my full-time gig. I really want to be able to step away from that or my part-time gig that is replacing the other part-time thing I'm doing. You can, I'm not saying go quit that today because I would never suggest that, but you can absolutely replace what, whatever income any of you are making you want to replace it? Come talk to me about how you replace it because I can promise you, you can replace any income you are earning if you're willing to put the work in. You can do that here at Parkland. I say it with such conviction. So we're going to pass this over to Jerry who has been rocking the online party scene for ever since she started. And she's going to be sharing her tips and tricks today from the minute she books that party until she closes it. So it's gonna be good. So get your notes, get your pen, get your paper, take notes. It's gonna be good information. Okay, Miss Jerry. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm really humbled to be asked to train because I really, I don't feel like there's anything special that I do. I just do a lot of it. So a couple of things before I jump into the step-by-step. I think a lot of it has to do with mindset and we've heard lots of training on that in the last months. Um, and, and that really, I think does affect your outcome because it affects your affect, like your, your demeanor and how you come across. It affects the unseen things or the un unsaid things that people see, um, how you come across. So um, focusing on what you've got going in your mind and the pressures that you're putting on yourself or the expectations. I mean, it's very good to have expectations, but 
I, I am not a proponent of having all of your eggs in one basket of any kind of basket. It's just too much pressure. And then it leads to disappointment, which leads to the roller coaster ride in a business that will exhaust you. And the only reason I know that is because I was in direct sales for 15 years in another jewelry business, which, which was good to me and I gained so much from, um, but I saw it in so many stylists and um, I learned early on how to overcome that egg in one basket syndrome. And so I just encourage you now, if your norm is doing two parties a month, um, make your life easier on yourself and, and the unexpressed pressure you're putting on those parties and those hostesses and do four instead. What is gonna happen is it's gonna relieve you of the pressure of those two parties having to be the be all end all and you can get back to having fun. Because if your parties are all about what they produce and the number, the, the money number for yourself, it's gonna be way too much pressure and a lot less fun. I've just found that you have to overcompensate with the number of parties you're doing so that it can be fun. Because if you have one party a month and you're going, this party has to be $800 a month, it, it just is going to come across in how you're projecting to your hostess and what you're doing to your guests. It's going to come across desperate. And just let me just tell you, nobody needs it. Nobody wants it. You're a lot better off to have four hostesses and be having fun and let the sum bulk total of those having fun produce for you what you need to do. Um, and I know that I work that way. Um, if, if I'm disappointed in how my business is going and, and it's just because I'm having to look at one event each week and this one was good and that one wasn't so good and this one was okay and I'm riding that emotional roller coaster of the outcome of those parties, for me personally, that is exhausting. I don't recommend it for anybody. It's not healthy for me <laughs> to expect and pressure that each party be a particular thing. Um, I would much rather just go in going, I have planned in advance for that. I have overbooked so that some can be great, some can be medium, some can be less than stellar, and it's not going to affect my emotional well-being. And it's not that the business is all about me, but I know that if it's not fun and I'm not having fun and I'm continually discouraged, I will not keep going. So if you have hit that where you're like, oh, my parties just aren't doing great, well, just book more parties overcompensate for the time of the year, overcompensate for hostesses that are just not going to do the things because I will do the same thing. And I know this from 15 years of experience, I will do the same thing with all of my hostesses pretty much. And some will do it and run with it. Some will kind of, and some won't do much at all. So I just want to tell you, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I could never do what she does. I'm not doing anything spectacular. Um, Every party isn't a 10 order party. Every party isn't a thousand plus. Yes, I'm having parties that don't qualify and I'm doing the same thing. I want you to hear this because I don't want you to think that disappointing hostesses who don't plug into you, that that is unique to you. That happens to everybody. Just accept it's part of the business. What can I do to overcompensate for that? Um, you are not special. You are special, but you're not special. If crappy things are happening and people are telling you no, guess what? They're telling me no too. So what? Um, I don't mean that to sound heartless um, because I'm not heartless. But all those disappointing things happen to me. They just happen to me more often. I just have more parties scheduled so they don't affect me very much. Okay, so let me tell you, first off, I was, I was retired last fall. I was not looking for a business. I was not looking to make any money. Um, nothing had happened in two years that excited me enough to do. I went through a lot of mental health things and spiritual growth and got to a really great place of contentment. So when I attended uh, Jennifer Cunningham, who's a great friend of mine, when I attended her online party, let me just tell you, 
I, I knew she was going to do Park Lane because she told me. I knew I was going to attend her launch party because she's my friend and I was going to support her. I knew that I absolutely didn't need any jewelry. You know why? Because I have been in jewelry business for 15 years. And I said, I'm going to show up. I'm going to buy a pair of earrings. Um, and initially in the party, I, I was not five minutes in and I thought this is genius because Christy was number one. She jumped right into the jewelry and the sale. It was super engaging. And it was this, it was, it was no fancy tips and tricks. It was just, look at it, it's pretty. And I'm going, yeah, it is. And the sale got me. So what I was drawn to about the party is number one, it was fast. Number two, it was fun. And the sale was genius. Now, I didn't need jewelry. I mean, I'm like retired, I go nowhere. I have, you know, I have a bunch of jewelry, but um, I was drawn to the Rue earrings and I really wasn't looking for a business then, but let me tell you, I filled a cart full and I had to book a party because I wanted a bunch more that I didn't need, but I wanted it. Women want to buy what they want, not what they need. We need tires, we need life insurance. We don't need jewelry, but we want to buy jewelry because it makes us feel good. Um, but I was drawn into the fast, fun, and the sale, and it was simple. I loved that Christy was sitting down. It was very approachable. You didn't seem to have to be like perfect to do it. Not that I can't stand in front of people and talk. I mean, I did it for 15 years, but I didn't want to do that again. Anything that resembled what I used to do seemed exhausting, and I didn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Tish, it is exhausting. It is funny because I mean, you should see all the jewelry I have still. Um, anyway, so when I decided to do Park Lane, let me just tell you, everybody starts for a different reason. If you start for income, I totally relate to that because when I started direct sales in 2004, it was to make $4,000. I was going to make $4,000. I was going to quit. That's all I wanted. Didn't have any dreams of a business. I made $4,000 in about two months in that business and was having fun and thought, why don't I just keep on going? And I did for 15 years and then I quit. It's better to say retired than quit. Just sounds better. Okay. But when I started with Park Lane, it wasn't for income. Not that we couldn't use income, but we have no bills other than our house. We've got good retirement. I mean, we don't even have a car payment. I mean, my daughter is married and out of the home, living comfortably. Not that we couldn't use more income, but what that did for me was allow me to do something for fun. So I had no pressure on myself. I had no expectations. Um, and that really freed me up because there's something about it when you need it. I, I, and I don't know how to mentally tell you to get around that, but focusing on the fun versus the financial outcome can change things for you. Because if your goal is fun and let's get my hostesses as much free jewelry as possible and not worrying as much on the financial outcome, that can benefit you emotionally. It benefits me emotionally. Maybe it won't benefit you, but it definitely benefits me. So um, when I started, I didn't want to recreate the wheel. I knew that the Treasure Tribe and the Dream Catchers had come up with a plan that worked. That was one of the reasons I didn't love venturing into Facebook parties in my old business because because we didn't have a good Facebook party system. Some people were doing seven days. Some people were doing three days. We had to come up with a post ourselves. It was more than I could do. Um, I just plugged into what Christy was doing. I literally asked her, I'm like, what do you say at your Facebook parties? Do you have a script? Do you have it written down? What do you say to do this? What do you say when you're checking guests out? And she was taking screenshots and I'm like, I don't want to come up with this. I just want to do what she's doing because everything that she did appealed to me and I didn't need jewelry. And I thought if everything she did appealed to me and I didn't need jewelry, maybe if I do it, it will appeal to people who also don't need jewelry. I don't know. It was just a thought. Um, and I'm very teachable. I mean, if you just tell me a plan, I'll just plug into the plan. So that was my initial mindset. Um, and so a couple more little tidbits before I start the step-by-step, -step. sorry. Um, I re recommend that you give yourself some grace. If you are new to direct sales, if you're new to Park Lane, please realize that I have 15 years of experience and I can fall back on a lot of that stuff that I know verbiage, um, mindset, knowing the ups and downs of business. So if you are new, I would encourage you to give yourself some grace and quit saying things like, I can't, 
and I don't know how, okay? You are to repeat to yourself, I am learning to host this coach better. I am learning to be more effective with planting seeds during my party. Saying I don't and I can't and I'm not good at is not good for you. You need to say, I am learning how to do this better. And as I practice it, I will get better because you will. Anything that you do in direct sales is a skill that you improve on. And so I'm going to share a lot of information today. Um, don't feel like you have to do everything at once. Just start doing and adding things in and practicing and getting better. And I will tell you anything that you do, um, don't write it off till you've done it 10 times. You can't really get a good average and see what is working, what's effective till you've done it 10 times. And really anything that I'm doing this summer, I'm just kind of having to go, well, it worked great in the spring. It's not working near as great in the summer. It's summer. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing it because I know that it works. Okay, so first off, what do I do first when I book an online party? Well, the first thing I do is I put it on my calendar. This is, this is an important thing. There have been two times I have failed at that moment to put it on my calendar. And I see this gal on Facebook. I'm like, I thought I booked a party with her. Oh, I had, I had to go back in the text. I didn't immediately put it on my calendar and I forgot. So put it on your calendar. Second thing, and when I'm booking, I, um, I always offer two dates and get the date. I put it on my calendar. I immediately send her the hostess perks graphic. I want her to have a visual reminder of what she's going to get free. And I let her know I'm going to need a few minutes on the phone with her about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 days before her party. Um, so if she's booked a week away, that I'll say, hey, you got about five, 10 minutes, we can chat tomorrow. If she's booked for two weeks out, I'm like, when toward the end of the week, can we visit for a couple minutes? I host this coach on the phone. The reason being is I want to hear her voice. She's heard me, but I cannot really build a relationship with her that I would like to and, until I talk to her and things things come out on the phone. You find out a lot about people um, by talking to them on the phone. So I do hostess coach on the phone and I will go through what I do when I hostess coach in a minute. So I put it on my calendar. I send her a graphic. I set up the time I'm gonna hostess coach. Um, and once I've hostess coach, and I will go through what I do in hostess coaching. Once I hostess coach, in my mind, that party is set. Until I have hostess coached her and talked through, to me, that's not, I don't say it's tentative, but that is the solid when I start doing everything else for her party. So the background things that help me stay organized is I use the reminders on my MacBook or my iPhone. So once I've hostess coach, I assign a day to set up her shopping link, set up her Facebook party, and then I put um, the reminder to remind her of the day that's going to be invite day. So the day before invite day, I remind her tomorrow night at five, your party group's going to be up and ready. It's going to be invite day. And then on that day, I have it on my calendar, invite day for Jill. And then, and I have my hostesses invite the evening before day one. So day live is four. So the evening before day one. And here's why. When I started, I was inviting, hostesses were inviting on day one. Well, what was happening is they weren't really inviting until the end of day one, which means it was end of day two and day three before people were getting into the party. So now inviting the night before day one, which means they get the wording that night, they invite that night, we're getting people into the group that night, day one, and finishing up on day two. It makes a difference getting them in the group sooner so they can see and start to um, engage. Okay, so the reminders on your phone, you know, each day I'll put day one, day two, day three with the hostess's name. That's my prompt every day when I look at my reminders of what I have to do today. When it says day one, I know, to go to my hostess coaching document, it's saved in the notes on my phone and I do whatever it says to do on day one. And so let me go day by day of what I do with the hostess. Okay, so let's start with hostess coaching. Really, really important to um, 
hostess coach. So you can do it however you want. I'm going to do it in person. I mean, on the, on the phone. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is thank her for scheduling a party with me and um, just chit chat just a little bit. I'm not going to take a whole lot of her time, but I want to get to know her a little bit. So I usually ask where she works, about her family, about her kids, and try to find some point of common interest. Um, I also, um, before a hostess coach her, send her um, either her shopping link or just my main website. I want her to make a wish list. If you have your hostess wishing for lots of jewelry, she's going to be more motivated. So here's how I hostess coach. I thank her for booking. I get to know her. And then I start with, here's what you're going to earn. Let me go over the hostess benefits. And then I'm going to teach you how we're going to do that together. Okay, I explained the hostess plan. Um, and I'm, I'm asking her to make a wish list of about $800 in free jewelry. Here's why. 10 orders is 400 free. A zinger is another 200 four half price items, it's going to be about $800. To simplify that, you could say, please make a wish list of your top 20 items. Because if she's making a wish list, she's going to have a goal. If she wants a lot of jewelry, she's going to be more apt to be on board with you. So when I'm explaining the $20 credit per order and doubling to 40 at 10, I say, okay, so 10 orders is 400 free. We don't cap out at 10, you know, 12 orders is 480, 20 orders is 800. What do you want to aim for? This is important because if she will take anything she can get, I know I've got a little uphill climb. You know, if she says, I don't have good luck with parties, I need to know what I'm working for. If she's like ooing and awing over 400 free, then I know I've, I don't have as much hard work because she's already excited about 400 free. So I need to know what her goal is. And she's like, well, I'd like to get 10. And I go, great, because my goal is to get you at least 10. So let's work together and I'm gonna coach you toward 10. Sound good? So she's gotta be on board with me. The first step is teaching her how to invite and when to invite. So I explain, we're going to invite on such and such day, we're going to do it the most personal way we can, which is either text or private message on Facebook. Women are busy, they will read a text, they will read a Facebook messenger message, they don't very often look at their notifications, so we can't rely on that invite button. I explain that to get to 10 orders, we found you need 30 friends to join the group. To get 30 to join, you're going to have to invite well over double that. I said, I know it sounds like a lot, but think of all the people you know on Facebook. As long as you interact with them in any form or fashion, they like, love, or comment on your post, or you like, love, or comment on their post, you have a Facebook friendship and you can invite them. I said, we are not thinking of just the people that live in your town that you go to the movies with. We are thinking of anyone that you interact with on Facebook. Okay, so I... I know I'm missing some steps, so I'll back up and <laughs> cover what I missed in a minute. So then I go over the rest of the hostess benefits, the half price items, and I really do stress the zinger with purchase at her friend's parties because I'm like, look, your wish list is going to be big. I want you to go ahead and pick out three or four items that are over 100 that you're going to want for future parties. These will be your zingers with purchase when your friends book. I'm already talking to her like, this is going to happen. This is what we're going to do because I want her to realize that benefits her. Um, I do explain she pays tax and shipping. I don't want her caught off guard by that. Um, and so I tell her that's what we're going to do the evening, you know, the invite day invite evening. And I say the next day, we're going to do a second round of invites because women are busy. When they get that text Facebook message, they might be cooking dinner or stopped at a stoplight. And if they don't join right then, they're going to forget to go back. So on day one, we're going to send out again something different to your top 20 or 30. I will send you the words. All you have to do is copy and paste. Okay, so when I'm hostess coaching her, I'm not going to tell her what we're going to do every single day, but I let her know invite day may take you 20 minutes every every other day, about five to 10 minutes of, of stuff I'll have you do. Simple, I will text you each day, we'll be BFFs for about four days, simple things for you to do in your party. I remind her that she's the hostess, she needs to be there invisible. Um, 
not invisible, <laughs> be there and visible, um, interacting with her friends. So I don't tell her all the things that hostess coaching because it's just too much information. It is a lot better to just focus on the inviting and then I'll just have a couple simple things for her to do each day and I'll just touch base with her each day. Okay, so that is hostess coaching. So then when it's invite day, you know, a reminder the day before invite day, on invite day, you know, anytime noon or after, I, I send her some basic wording. And again, I'm not reinventing the wheel. It's saved in my notes. Okay, your party's up and ready. It's time to invite. Please send this via text or Facebook message to 75 or more people. Please put her name to make it personal. Um, we're going to have a great party. And then in a separate message, all she has to do literally is copy and paste it. It has the link to the party, party group. And she can just type a name, copy paste. Um, really should not take more than 15 to 20 minutes to send that message out to a bunch of people. Okay, so day one of the party, I get up, I'm gonna look and see how many have joined the group. Now, typically I have two or three hostesses in a group. So I don't know who belongs to who, but I will um, voice text my hostess each one. Hey, we've got 30 people in the group, including me, you, and the other two hostesses. That's great. Remember, we're working to get 30 of your friends to join the group so that we can get you 10 orders, which is 400 free. Let's send this message below to your top 20 or 30 who haven't yet joined the group. Please check the membership and let's send this out. Again, it's copy paste. Very simple. End of day two, um, I'll check in and I'll just ask her to tag everyone in the, in the post that teaches their friends how to turn on their notifications. And I got this from Sarah because I was seeing that um, people were not seeing the post. They're just absently joining the group, but they're forgetting that they joined. They're not seeing what's going on. So some of my hostesses don't know how to tag. So I asked them, do you know how to tag people in the comments? And if they don't, I just type out some simple instructions so they'll know how to do that. So that's end of day two. On day three, I'm checking membership again. If, if we don't have enough people in the group, I just say, please check the membership and use the invite button and invite 20 or 30 of the same people or different people. Inviting is kind of a constant process. If they get a bunch of people in right away, great. If they don't, I'm just keeping an eye on it, pointing them toward the goal. 30 friends for 10 orders, 30 friends for 10 orders. On day three or day two, two or three, I'm asking her to post, um, a picture of herself or jewelry that she wants, post a selfie, post a picture of the jewelry that you purchased at the last party because your friends will want to see what you like. And number two, Facebook is going to show your friends what you post before it shows them what I post. And some of your hostesses will take this by storm. They will do this before you even ask. They will take ownership of their party and act like a hostess. And some don't know to do that. So um, you can't assume that they know what to do because they just really don't. <laughs> so that is on day three. I also, I also ask her that day to pick four or five pictures of jewelry and tag a couple of different friends asking them a question such as, do you like the bracelet or the earrings better? Do you like this uh, gold or the silver piece better? And, and I tell them, Imagine that we're standing around your kitchen table with all of this jewelry on the table and you were talking to your friends. That is what I want you to recreate in this party through your interaction with your friends, engaging them and talking to them. They don't really know. They will just type, if you don't tell them specifically, they'll go, this is pretty, I like this. Well, that doesn't really do any good. But if they type, hey, Jill and Amy, this piece reminds me of you. Don't you have a top this will look great with? That is engaging. That is more of what they would be doing if we were standing around the kitchen table with all the jewelry on the table. Okay, so day, day end of day three, I tell her tomorrow is party day. We will do day of reminders for everybody who is in the party group. 
So on day four, I wake up, yay, it's party day. We're gonna have a great party. Here are some words to send out to every lady who joined the group. Women are busy, they need reminders. Send this out as you can today, even if it's after work. Again, it's copy paste. And then 30 minutes or an hour before the party, I do a voice text to her and just tell her how things are gonna go, what she can do to make the live party experience the best. And a couple of things are comment a lot during the party. Remember to be very enthusiastic about your friends booking a party with me because you get a zinger with purchase at each one of their parties. So be very excited about them doing that, encourage them. Um, I let them know I'm gonna do drawings. I'm gonna come back live and I ask her to join me back during that and let her know I'm gonna send her the names of who have sent wish lists as the ladies complete their orders. And I'm gonna send her some thank you images so she can thank her friends and post that in the party. So that is the hostess coaching. And that was probably too long. I am gonna back up and say, <laughs> After I host as coach, I do send a save the date image and I just leave it up to her if she wants to use it or not. Like you can text this out, you can Facebook message it out, you can also put it on your Facebook profile, but it basically says I'm having a party, watch for your invite through text or Facebook messenger on such and such date. So it uh, doesn't require interaction back and forth. Okay, so that's what I do leading up to the party. Should I open up for questions about that part, Tish, or do you want me to go on what I do during the party? Why don't we open it for questions for just a moment? Because I know we've gotten some in the um, in the chat box. So we'll, we'll, we'll do maybe three questions right now, and then we'll keep going. Okay. If you've got a question, unmute yourself. I have a quick question. I have a Okay, whoever spoke first, go ahead. All right, I'll go. Hey, um, um, so you do like one group for like three parties at a time and you do the same thing. Like, and when I heard, I, I just wanna make sure I understood you. If you had three parties booked, you would just do one group? Right, I, I do one Facebook party group with multiple hostesses because that is just posting through since share one time. And what that does for me is it just allows me to maximize my time because I know some hostesses are going to work really hard. Some are going to do medium and some are not going to do well. I can accomplish all of that in one live presentation versus three different presentations because I know that doing a live for two people, it's deflating, it's exhausting. And frankly, it kind of makes me mad and makes me not love this business. So I have to keep myself in a good headspace. And doing three hostesses allows for all of the possibilities and it stacks the deck in my favor. Um, that sounds very selfish, but it's not because um, I want to keep doing this and I got to stay in a good headspace. So if I'm doing one party a week and each live party only has three people on it, I'm not going to love this business anymore. Um, and I might be tempted to quit and think that's how it always is. Well, it isn't. Um, and there is kind of a, a factor when you have multiple hostesses, you know, if they're kind of lagging, they will either step it up because they're competitive um, and go, oh, she's got 14 friends and I've only got five. I better do the things. Or she's going to be the type that's not going to do it regardless. And so I'd rather not give her a whole night on my calendar if she's going to be one of those. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Next I question. Have a question. Yes, um, this is Maria. And I am, call I am wondering if you coach your hostesses differently if they're a repeat hostess. I'm running um, into that now. I'm, I'm just now coming up on repeat hostesses um, since I started in January. Um, Did she just freeze on y'all? Okay. We'll see if she unfreezes. While we're frozen. Oh, there you are, Jerry. Okay. Back. 
Um, so I haven't, I haven't experienced that with this business yet. I'm just getting into repeat hostesses. So um, I have to get them excited all over again because, and I have to remind them what happened at their first party. I will send them the list, the names of everyone who purchased from them before, because we're going to focus on, on those gals. Jerry, I want to ask you a couple of questions that I'm seeing in the comments. Explain how you um, share the links for the three hostesses when you're doing it in one group. How do you do that? Okay. On the, um, in the party, when you're setting up a party in the name and description of the party um, shows up under about, that is where I put it initially. Um, so-and-so's link to look, so-and-so's link to look, so-and-so's link to look. So it's there. And then at the end of day two or the beginning of day three, I manually put in a post that has her picture and a little write up. If so and so is your hostess, here is your link to look. Please text me your wish list for the best deal, blah, blah, blah. And then it has her link. I put that under notifications and I ask her, I do ask her to tag her friends in that as well. Okay, awesome. Okay, I think because we're short on time, let's keep moving. And then if we have more time at the end, we'll get more questions answered. Okay, guys, I think that'll be best for everybody. And that way we've got the recording and we've got the training and maybe at the end we end the recording and then we, if we have time for more Q&A, we'll do that. But I wanna keep Jerry moving on her process so that we get all that for future trainings. Thank you guys. So when I'm doing the live party, um, I start talking right away. So I am talking, I tag, um, I tag all of the guests so that they get a notification that I'm going live. So for those of y'all using a business page, do be aware that you can't tag if you're interacting as your business page. So make sure that you change your interaction to yourself when you go live so that you can tag the people. And I'm just introducing myself and telling them, please let me know when you're here. If you're watching the replay, thank you. Type in the comments, hashtag replay. I don't wait for people to arrive to start talking. I will tell a little bit of my story during that time. It gives people time to come on board. Who I am is the least important thing so they can miss that. I don't want them to miss out on the uh, sale information and the hostess benefits. To me, those are the most important things. So I jump in right away. Um, here, here are a couple of tips about your life. If you're a new stylist, if you are an experienced stylist, watch one of your lives back. Ask yourself, would I stay on live with myself for 45 minutes? Are you engaging enough and fun enough to keep people's attention? Um, I am not. Um, but um, my normal energy level is not enough to keep probably someone on with me for 45 minutes. But when you're doing a live party, you've got to realize that you are also the entertainment. So you need to turn it on a little bit. Whatever your normal energy level is, you need to be you on Mountain Dew. A little bit extra because you are the entertainment. Um, you may think you're excited, but if your affect is flat and you are not smiling, this is not good. Um, if you look uncomfortable to the point that it makes other people feel uncomfortable, they are not going to want to book with you. This is straight talk, people, because I love you, because they don't want to put you through it. You can feel uncomfortable, but don't look uncomfortable. It doesn't matter what they think of you. Be okay to laugh at yourself. Put the smile on big ramp up the energy level because this is important. You are the entertainment. So if you're not naturally very excited, fake it. Pretend that you're doing a one act play, rehearse and do the play, put on the performance. It makes a difference. People want to be entertained. They want to have fun. And if you're talking monotone and you look scared to death, they're going to go, poor thing. I don't want to make her ever do this again. It's just really important. Watch yourself back. If you are new, set up a fake group, invite your upline, invite your best friend, practice with your lighting. You don't have to do the whole party, but practice, work out the kinks so that you are not 
learning on your first audiences. Okay, so during the party, I jump right in. Um, I tell everybody to make a wish list and why. Talk about the sale, super, super exciting. Um, I am very animated. My hands are going. This is big. If you can't get excited about this sale, then like my pastor would say, your log is wet. I mean, you have got to get excited about this sale because it is unlike anything out there. If you're not convinced of it, they won't be convinced of it. Um, so big deal to go through the sale and the wish list. And I do hold up the paper. Um, throughout the party, I do the party in sections, earrings, then necklaces, then bracelets. After earrings, after every section, I want them to tell me their top three favorites. And I'm looking in the comments. If they list five, I can go, oh, oh Jill, you like five things. I can tell you're going to be my next hostess. I am engaging with them, not constantly, but I don't want to be so stuck on my script that it seems too polished. Um, my goal is to just be myself, the, the happiest, most energetic self that I am but also relatable. So during my party, there are a couple of things I do because they're just natural to me and you might have to tell yourself to do this. Um, I hold up my notes because I want people to see that you don't have to have everything memorized. I do that because I want them to see you can be new, you can have notes, you don't have to be perfect. You can do this if you can read. So I say, okay, girls, can you do this? Can you read notes? Guess what? You can do what I'm doing. It really is that easy. I'm sitting upstairs in my house in my daughter's bedroom. Um, she's grown and married. Um, the reason I shared little tidbits throughout the party um, relating like something I've done that day or something about my life is because I want them to know me a little bit. I want them to start relating to me, my stage in life. Um, so that I'm not just the jewelry lady, but I'm Jerry and they feel like they know me and they're comfortable with me. I'm not so perfect. Sometimes I spit, I've knocked over um, necklace boards and made a mess and I've just laughed and I'm like, see, anybody can do this. Um, if you're so worried about being perfect, I think you missed the point. Um, being authentic is way more important than being perfect. So sprinkling seeds throughout your party about their wish list, um, say things that they might not have thought of. You, I bet your wish list is huge and out of control right now. You're wondering, how are you going to get all of that jewelry? Well, let me tell you, you can have two carts for sure. A perfect cart is eight items. Um, so if you send me a wish list of 20 something items, I'm going to recommend that you do two carts and you probably need to have a party with me. Um, you can text me anytime the word party. That lets me know that you want to get on my calendar and my dates fill quickly. So go ahead and text me the word party. Um, if you seem desperate for parties, guess what? Nobody's going to want to book with you. If you are in demand and um, assume that everybody wants to have a party with you, it, it comes across. I just assume everybody's going to want to have a party with me because... Um, the hostess benefits are, are great. The Facebook party is fun and it really is easy. Um, so texting, have them text you the word party anytime. Now, that's not how I get most of my parties. I ask at checkout. So they are sending me a wish list and I do the normal, you know, y'all all know this, you're getting them the best deal. Um, I ask everybody if they'd like to have a fun Facebook party like so-and-so. For the ones who send me big wish lists, wish lists, it's really easy to say, you obviously love our jewelry. Would you like to have a fun Facebook party like Jill so your friends can uh, be introduced to our sale and we'll get you a lot free? When they say, and I say, I have this day or this day, what do you think? I'm giving them options. I don't just always say, what do you think? Because that leaves it out there too much. Um, sometimes I get the response back of not yet or not right now. And to me, that's not a no. I just go, sure, no problem. What were you thinking? That's not the end. They're like, I just can't in August. I'm like, no problem. You like September? Do you want a Thursday or a Sunday? And they'll go, a, a Sunday is better. I'm like, great. I have this Sunday and this Sunday. So 
unless they say no, I'm just not interested or just a, a no period. To me, that is just an invitation to check back. So that's, you know, what I'm doing. But I realize many of these ladies are new to Park Lane. They might have to get their jewelry first to be convinced that they love it. So I do customer care um, texts every Saturday. Um, if a party has been delivered and people have had their jewelry for three or four days, I just check in and say, have you gotten your jewelry? Do you like everything? Are you getting compliments? Sometimes they reply, sometimes they don't. Um, when they reply, I'm like, that's great. Are you ready for a fun Facebook party yet? Um, it's just simple because I have some that they say no and two weeks later it's a yes when they get their jewelry. Um, and they might tell me this month is just not good. Could you contact me next month? Absolutely. I put them on my calendar. I check back with them next month. Um, so a couple of tips. Things to do on purpose for sponsoring is to not be so perfect and not be so polished. Be relatable and be yourself. Act like you're talking to a group of girlfriends. I'm going to be just, you know, a little bit goofy. Um, I might occasionally say something inappropriate. That's just who I am. And I'll apologize. I'm taking a drink of my drink. Um, it's just not all, I mean, it's about the jewelry, but it's about, let's have some yeah. fun. And also being, you know, really deliberate. Well, I realized over the weekend that Lane has his sports fish. <laughs> also being deliberate to say what, watch what I do at, at, watch what I do during this party. And I do say that at the beginning. Um, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Um, I don't know where you are in your life. Before I started Park Lane, I was retired. So you may not be looking for anything. I absolutely get it. Um, you may be needing some fun. You may be needing a group of girlfriends. You may be needing some income. I don't know where you are, but just watch what I'm doing tonight because Park Lane could meet any and all of those needs. You probably have never considered something like this before, but I'm just going to ask you to watch me and see what you think. It's very laid back. I don't have any emotional attachment to if people book a party with me or if they want to hear the business or not. I'm just doing the things that when done consistently over and over do yield results. I know that was really kind of all over the place. Sorry. It happens. Absolutely amazing, Jerry. So many great, incredible tips and um what I think we should do, and let me get y'all's opinion. So I want to keep this recording for training. So do you think from a training perspective, it's helpful to keep our some Q&A on the training recording or should I stop the recording? Stop the recording and then we can go through some Q&A. Okay, let me stop the recording, everybody. Um, hold on, recording. Pause recording. Okay. Perfect. Jerry, you're so awesome. Uh, I know there's like a million questions. We're getting lots of questions. So, oh, and someone just said, don't stop the recording. Okay, I'm sorry. The recording's been stopped, but you know what? It's in our Facebook Live. So we've got it in the live, which will be great. And then we'll have it two different places. Um, all right. So I guess if you guys have a question, let's do this. Raise your hand in the chat. I guess there's a way to raise your hand because I saw some hands raised earlier. Anita, I'm going to call on you first. Are you still there? And do you want to ask Jerry a question? And if you're not there, then Marcelle, how about you? You had a question. Hi, ladies. Hello. Can you hear, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hey, Miss Jerry. I love watching you from, you know, your VIP page. And I appreciate you letting me be there so I could, you know, just observe you and your just who you are and what you do because it's really helped my business a lot so my my main question to you is how do you get your hostesses to feel special when you when they know that there's multiple hostesses on the same day um that's a great question i think part of that is keeping my hostess coaching separate so i when I host this coach, I'm talking to just them on the phone and the messages that I'm sending to them are separate. They're not in a group text or a group Facebook message. So I'm interacting with her as if she is the only hostess in that party. 
Okay, great. Because being able to uh, schedule on maybe one day versus spreading them out would really help my life. <laughs> right, right. I get it. Um, I, I am doing exactly what I would do if there were one hostess or four hostesses in a party. So I'm just talking with her. And sometimes I have to, um, it, it's not, I might have one party open and the hostesses are not working at the same level. So I'll customize what I'm asking her to do based on what she's done and where we're at. So, you know, if I, if she says, you know, I've, you know, I've only had six people join the party. Well, I'm going to give her specific instructions. You know, they're not all working to the same level. Gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your, your advice. Sure. Okay. Next question. Three, five, seven, five, three, five. I don't know who you are, but if you know who that is, you want to ask the question, go ahead. Three, five, seven, five, three, five. Okay, moving to the next person. Kristen Davidson, you had a question. I do have a quick question. So Jerry, I came over um, from another business and my audience is very fickle and they are doing a lot of watching. So I'm having trouble um, booking a bunch while well, booking parties, period. And Tish, you might have some input on this too. Just uh, something to help me get people booking. I'm trying to get the ball rolling and I'm giving myself very much grace knowing my audience. But any tips? Sure. When I started, Christy recommended that I offer the two fast 50s, the extra hundred um, to my first six. But then she said, you know, you can just keep offering those. And I did. Every hostess that booked with me in the beginning um, through my first three months I offered them the extra fast 50. So if it was someone I knew, I could say, hey, I need your help to get my business going. I can treat you to an extra $100 free in addition to everything you get from Park Lane. Um, we'll have a great time, super fun and easy. Would you help me out? Um, so initially you kind of do ask for a little bit of help, but booking in a bunch of parties in a short period of time is the best thing that you can do. Um, booking two multi-hostess parties three days in a row is going to get you where you want to be a lot faster than one party a week for four weeks. Um, that cluster booking gets momentum going and it prevents frustration because the ball gets rolling quicker. Um, my analogy is getting your calendar where you want it feels like pushing a ball up a hill. And it, it takes a lot of going to get it there. But if you'll do all the work in a shorter period of time to get your calendar where you want it, that ball will start rolling down the hill and you'll have momentum. Um, so offering the extra hundred, um, I think is beneficial. If you just need bookings period, offer that right now. Personal reach outs are best. What I'm currently doing is because I'm not having trouble getting bookings, I offer, um, when, when my hostess gets three bookings, I give her the extra hundred. So now I'm using the fast fifties to reward the hostess for her friends. Um, if I were needing bookings, I would, I would probably offer a hundred for each booking and then offer to pay for the zinger with purchase at the third party when it holds. So you can use, use your incentives for what you need. Um, if you need bookings, use the fast fifties in a way that will get you bookings. Um, I've, I've got, you know, I always could use some more. I'd like to be booked through October and not have any space for them. Um, but you know, that's what I'm using now. And I do have some, you know, hostesses that, you know, they get an extra hundred for me because we get three bookings from their party. So, and then I can tell them you should, you should probably think about doing this because all your friends love this jewelry. Love that Jerry. Okay. Sharon Pitts. Next question. If you're there, Sharon Pitts. Yes, hi. Um, my question is, when you do your parties, um, do you show all of your jewelry in your kit or just some of them? Oh, I do not show all of my jewelry. When I started, I showed all the jewelry I had, but I try to keep my party to 45 minutes and I'm pretty much on the nose 47 minutes. So... I, I show enough jewelry that I can do all the talking and the stuff I need to do. And it's certainly not all the jewelry I have. So 
you know, you can always ask for requests in your party. If you have special pieces you'd like to see and you're going to be on the live, let me know what you would like to see. That's a way to get your guests involved and you can show specific pieces um, if they're going to be on the live. Okay. Lauren, because, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, my, um, I was a little nervous in starting over again um, because I thought, the first time I showed all my pieces and that I had in my bag and it was a bit exhausting and confusing, but I like your ideas. Just show a few pieces, talk about the benefits. And um, it, I'm trying to start, but I work full time at the airport. So it, it's a little difficult for me to have as many parties as you have. I definitely understand. I don't have another job. So everybody needs to keep that in mind that I'm retired. I have no kid. I well, I'm not retired now, um, but I have no children at home. So my life and everyone's life is not going to be the same. So pick the nights that you can do parties. And if it's one night a week, do one night a week, but do back to back parties or two hostesses in each one. That way you get more benefit for your time. Okay. Next question. Lauren Smith. Hey, Jerry. Hey. Um, loving all of your tips. So I have several parties. I've done the multi-hostess before, but I have several parties where hostesses, um, they're kind of like, oh, I'm happy with whatever. And then their party doesn't qualify at all. Or they have this really long list, but then their party still doesn't qualify. So what do you, like, what are your tips to get them to like find that extra order. Like right now I have two gals that are like $70 away from even 300 um, as a qualified party. And they're, they've kind of just like given up. Do I just close it and say like, thanks for hosting and send them a pair of studs or what's the that's alternative? That's <laughs> Well, you can give her a couple of options. You can say we're seventy dollars away. Do you want to? Do you want to text a few people and round up another order or two? Do you want to place an order yourself to qualify the party, or do you just want to close out? Um, I've got to realize too that how would I feel as a hostess if I reminded people, you know, two times, three times, and nobody else is ordering? Do I want to hound my friends? Frankly, no, I don't. So if there weren't enough people in the party to begin with, that can happen. Um, so I just give her a couple of options. And if she just wants to close it out, we close it out. Um, I, I do do, I often do a countdown towards 10 or towards five. Um, I'll put a countdown in the hostess's picture and say, so-and-so is X orders away from $100 in free jewelry or X orders away, we can still help. Today is the last day. And I kind of customize that based, you know, on the hostess. Again, I realize that it's the time of year. People are not on Facebook as much. They're out. The world opened up for a lot, little while. It's, it seems to be closing back up maybe <laughs> um, some, but there's just haven't been as many people join the group. Um, my personal sales per hostess have been down. Um, and so we just have to realize some of them are like that, but it's just part of the up and down of the business. It is not the determiner of how things are always going to be. So do the best you can with those hostesses. Let them have a say in what they want to do and just move on and keep looking ahead. Okay. I've that. done those and it's just, well, I've done both of those and they're just kind of like blah. There's like 30 or 40 people in either party group. So I have a single hostess in one party and a single hostess in another. And we're just like struggling. She's like, I've texted everybody. And I'm like, you haven't texted everybody in the five minutes. <laughs> so it might right. just be that we close it and she gets like a thank you for hosting pair of studs. Right. And sometimes they will. And sometimes they won't. You just, you can't make them. Um, you could go live in the party again and go, ladies, we are one or two orders away from so-and-so earning her benefits. Do you have any gifts you need to give? Um, but at some point I need, personally, I need to focus my attention on the next one. If she's not going to do her part, I can't do it all for her. And so it's much easier to get her yeah. on board at the beginning than to try to resurrect it at the end. I mean, you do what you can do and then you just move on. I hope that, I don't know Perfect. that that helps. It's not that I write them off, but you know, if I give them a couple options and they don't want to do it, I'm not going to order on her party for her to qualify. She can. Um, thank you. Okay. 
Leslie, uh, Leslie has a question. I'm going to throw a couple questions at you from the chat. Leslie need it, need it. I believe. How do you, how do you pronounce your last name? Leslie? Night it's night it's okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, Jerry, awesome training, like fabulous. Um, writing so furiously here. So my question is when you're advising your host, um, to invite guests, um, are you telling them not to mass invite, like send a message first? And then if they say yes, click the invite button, like how, um, I just want to be clear about how you advise them to use that invite button within the group. I ask them to start by doing copy paste via text and Facebook messenger, individual messages that are personalized with their friend's name. And okay. I tell them why women will read a text. They'll read a Facebook message. Most women don't check their notifications. It's very impersonal and people will feel like they're one of 5 million that have been invited. Mm -hmm. um, I use it on day three, just basically kind of like a reminder. So if they've sent the personal text, that's just mm -hmm. one more, ooh, they pop up and go, oh yeah, I saw that twice and I didn't join. I don't use it as the primary, it's yeah. just supplemental. Okay. So you're, you're having them message the guests that they're inviting and including the link, I'm assuming the link to the party. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've invited them to the party. They've added them. They've added them to the party or invited them to the party, but you, they're sending a message about the party. Correct. The way that they're inviting is the message. Okay. Okay. The that That's, that, that's a big distinction. And that's, I think that makes a very big difference in how. Well, I, I think that notifications are, unless people stay on Facebook a lot or they run a business on Facebook a mm. lot, a lot of women just don't check their notifications and that's all the invite button does. They yep. will look at a personal message and it's just more personal. It is. Um, yep. and, the, and they realize, oh, my friend had to send this to me rather than invite, 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 invite. Right. So and they that, don't have a buy-in. What if they say no? You know, then they then they then they don't want to be part of it. You know, so right. So you're you're not even you're just to make sure everybody's clear on this. Hearing what Jerry just said, she is not having her hostesses use the invite button to invite the people. Day, day three as kind of a reminder. Day three is a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. That's good. Thank you for that and, clarification. And even then, I I tell them. This, they may or may not see this, but let's try it. Um, and what I do have some of them do is they jump right in, they do the invite button and I can go see that they have done that right off the bat. And I ask them to then go copy paste the message. And I tell them why I said, most of your friends are not going to see that in their notification. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. them to join. So if you're asking them to do something, I always like to tell them why I'm asking. I'm the expert. They don't know. Um, this is my business. I'm the expert in how this works. So I'm telling them what to do and why, how it benefits them. And Jerry, just to clarify, I, you've already went through this once, but share one more time, just an example of what that first initial message would be that your hostesses are sending to their friends to invite them. Um, it says something like, I recently attended a, an online um, Park Lane jewelry party. It was so much fun that I'm having one of my own. I would love for you to attend. The fun posts start now and the live Facebook party is on Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. CT. Please click the link below to join. I look forward to seeing you there. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks uh, so much. That, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There was one other question I saw in the, uh, that I wanted to, oh, so, um, Connie had asked, you went through the day of the live. So like day five and day six, kind of like the follow-up days, just briefly, what are your, what are you doing at, you know, the day, the morning after the live, what are you doing? Okay. Um, and I saw somebody ask about raffles. Yes, I do go back live, um, the night of the party and I do a wish list giveaway and I do a commenting giveaway and the commenting giveaway also comes from the wish list because I, I don't give prizes to people who aren't purchasing um, because that does no one any good. So day five, well, here's what happens. Day four, after the live, if there were not very many on the live, I asked the hostess to send out a message that night. 
Um, and it basically says the live party was so much fun. I know things get busy and you may have missed it. Here's the live playback. I would love to hear what pieces that you like. Please text Jerry your wish list for the best deal and then my phone number. I include the direct link to the live playback. You can get that um, so they don't have to scroll through the party to find it. So if we don't have very many on the live, I have their person that immediately that night, day five, um, the instructions are, the fortune is in the follow-up. We can get a lot more orders by encouraging friends to watch the playback. And so I either ask her to send us a different message, very similar, or sometimes I ask her to um, do a three-way message, either text or Facebook messenger. That's a hit or miss. It doesn't always work great for me. Um, I found that my hostess who takes ownership of her party, um, they just do better. You know, because they'll personally message and go, hey, did you watch? What did you like? You know, if she's really excited about the jewelry, that does it. I just provide words for her if she doesn't know what to say. You know, I give it to her, but some of them, they kind of take it and run with it. And they just, they typically do better. Okay, so um, going hey. back to raffles, um, can you, just to clarify, you do a commenting giveaway. So you've got a posting or script that says, comment on you know as many posts as possible increases your chances of winning blah 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 um what do you give away for your commenting giveaway um I I, I haven't broken these up yet but I use the smiley and I'm going to be using these and that's 10 gifts so they get a pair of studs for commenting and um my wish list drawing gets a piece of jewelry it could be anything from the rue earrings to um, the Betsy necklace, it just, it just depends. Okay. And you get all this free for through your rich rewards. I'm assuming. Right. right. And the other night I did try something fun. I said, um, anybody who, well, I actually put a picture of the jewelry that I was going to do for the wish list. Um, I posted the picture when I get at least 10 wish lists by such and such time, I'll do a drawing for this so they could see what they were. And I got, I had four completed orders before the party. That was fun. That's awesome. So to clarify, back to the wish list drawing, because I'm seeing this question. People are wanting to know, do you tell them at the end of your live, okay, you guys have 30 minutes, like explain how you walk through your wish list drawing and what they have to do. And then just one more time, to make sure okay. everybody knows. I know that I start most of my parties at seven. I know that I typically finish at 747. It's just, that's my number. So I tell them I'm going to come back live at 835 because it's really fun to say. So I tell them at the end, okay, ladies, we're going to come back live at 835. I'm going to do two drawings. So everyone who texts me their wish list during that time will go into a drawing. Remember, you are not committing to purchase everything on your wish list, but you are saying, yes, I'm going to purchase something on my friend's party. I'm going to take your wish list. I'm going to apply the sales and get you the best deal. I will text you back a shopping cart link. We might have to go back and forth a couple of times to get it just how you want it. When it looks just how you want it, you can check out directly from the link. So text me your wish list. Here's my phone number. We're going to come back live here at 835. I'll see you here. That's it. And then she comes back live at that time and she picks the, the commenting giveaway and the wish list giveaway from the names that have sent you a wish list, basically. Correct. Yeah. Does that answer your questions, guys? I realize there's so much stuff, Tish, that I left out because my mind was kind of scrambled today. I didn't, um, I'm not as fresh and alert as I wanted um, uh, to do because I didn't really talk as much about, um, you know, the sponsoring because I do when I host as coach, I left that out. That's probably one of the most important things to do when your host is coaching is to say at the end, I don't know who. Hold on, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you. <laughs> Cause I have to set her up, take a sip. Jerry has sponsored 12 people since June 1st. Okay. And she's doing this through her hostess coaching. So get your pen and paper out again. <laughs> and now Tish is recording this. <laughs> Listen to what she's doing. <laughs> Listen up ladies. Now, let me tell you. Um, I got this wording from Tish. And so I just say it when I'm hostess coaching at the end, I go through all about her party and I say it very matter of factly. 
listen, I don't, I, I never know who's curious or not, but I share this information with all of my hostesses because I don't know um, who might um, be curious about what Park Lane offers its stylist. Um, if I send you this recording, would you take a look? They usually all res respond yes, but very often I get, oh, I've been thinking about, or oh, I wondered such and such and such and such. And I just don't get into a lot of information right then. I mean, I send them the recording and, and I say, I'll check back, see what questions you have. Y'all, it's so laid back that they're not feeling, hopefully, like I'm trying to track them down and trying to recruit them. I am not trying to recruit. My goal is to share information and answer questions. If that can be your goal is this sharing of information and not on the outcome, um, that's all I can have control over. The only thing you have control over is how many people you ask to what, attend, uh, learn more, or to watch the video. That's all you have control over. That and the follow-up. You don't have any control over who signs up. So asking lots of people to listen to the information should be the goal and have no emotional attachment to who comes and joins or not. Um, if they don't want to join the business, don't hurt my feelings. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So that's how I've sponsored. And it's mainly been hostesses. Um, many of them I didn't know were curious. Um, there are some that I'm obvious, obviously going to say to, um, you were all over this party. You were so excited. I think you'd be a great stylist. Would you um, take a look at this information if I sent it to you? There are those that I can point that out. Others, I'm just going to offer it because it's just part of my job. Uh, it's part of my job to share because I don't know. I don't know. Um, in fact, when my friend Jennifer asked me, hey, Jerry, have you thought about doing this again? I went, no, done, done with direct sales. But I was thinking about it. And because she asked me to think about it, I started thinking about it. So it's part of planting the seed um, is, is suggesting what needs it might could meet for someone. And because you're getting on the phone with your hostesses and you're getting to know them a little bit, you can authentically make a suggestion because you've gotten to know them a little bit. Right. That's the thing. When you're on the phone and you're getting to know your hostesses, you can say, you know, I know you mentioned that your daughter does um, competitive volleyball. I mean, I don't know, but this might be something that could go towards the travel costs of that. I mean, you know, you can just make it personal for them. Okay, people are asking what video. So you're sending the learn more about Park Lane video that's six minutes long. Is that right, Jerry? No, actually I do one that Chris, well, I've got a new one now, but I had been sending one from April that Christy and I had done um, for our team. And the reason why I was sharing that one because I was talking some too and they knew me, but having her talk, having three years in Park Lane and then 10 years experience before that validated anything that I might say to them because I'm relatively new still in Park Lane. Um, so I was sending them that recording um, because it's all the information. And what I'm seeing is women will watch a recording before they'll show up for a live Zoom. And so it's very non-threatening for them to watch or listen to that on their own terms. And it, they're not having to commit because I feel like if they say, yeah, I'm going to show up at such and such time, that feels like a commitment. Like they're really <laughs> um, uh, conceding that they're curious. And here's the thing. Women have to go from not having thought about anything like this to the point of curiosity to the point of some interest. So you can't ask people, do you want to do this? You have to share enough information with them so that they go to the point that they're curious to the point that they can picture themselves doing it to the point of being interested. And it doesn't happen for most people just like that. It takes a little bit of time. I'm going to empower everybody on this call. Write down this app. It's called Friendly. F-R-I-E-N-D-L-Y. Friendly. I'm putting it in the chat. I'm going to tell you what friendly is. And I am not a super tech savvy person. And even I figured it out. So you download friendly and then it allows you, you're going to connect friendly to your Facebook account. And then it allows you to go to any, sorry, I'm going to, um, I do this. Okay. Hold on. It allows you to go on to Facebook. You could go to our learn more group. 
you could pick out whatever video you love that you think speaks to your people because we've got lots of them in there okay you could download three if you wanted you can take any video and you can download it it's literally a button you download the entire video and you say i think to your photos or files i always say photos and then it could be a one hour video downloads to my photos okay then i take that video that that um file i've just saved on my photos and i upload it to youtube and i create a youtube link and then i can send that to anyone at any time so we do this for you guys to have you know youtube links at your fingertips but you guys are smart businesswomen you can go to that learn more group you can pick three videos you absolutely love download them upload them to three youtube links make a note in your phone you know videos for sharing opportunity videos for sharing and you can always at any moment it's just a click away for you to go and share whatever you want to share and that friendly app is the easiest way to upload any video to youtube you would not want to try to send them the file it's too long it won't send so that's how you want to i encourage you guys to do that because there's so much great content that's being shared in that learn more group and by the way i'm doing our opportunity to learn more on thursday at 6 p.m central in the group this week it'll be me so i'll be there live thursday at 6 p.m and we'll have an invite for you soon tish maybe after you do it we can upload it you know and we can pin it to the top of the treasure tribe. So that way, anytime you just want to go find something, if you've forgotten how to do all this, we could just have that one because Tish's will be awesome because she's Tish. Well, <laughs> I'll try. This is what it looks like. It's literally just called friendly. Maybe it's called friendly social browser, but it's like, it looks like a little Martian blue face. I don't know if that's a Martian, but you know what I mean? It's just that it just says friendly. So um, maybe it is called Friendly Social Browser. All right, guys, Jerry, I think they keep you on for eight hours and I'm not gonna let them do that because you've already given an hour and a half of your time, but thank you all so much, Jerry. Thank you guys, put in the comments how grateful you are to Jerry. And Jerry, I'm already telling people, you guys don't go asking Jerry to join her VIP group. Don't go asking Jerry to join her next Facebook, can you imagine her three hostesses with their 90 people in the group? And then there's 500 of her treasure tribe closest friends. She cannot do that. Okay. I'm not in her VIP group. Okay. So if I'm not in it, you don't have to be in it, but I'm just saying we have the faux training um, group for the treasure tribe. It's called mock live faux training. It's pinned at the top of our treasure tribe group in that group. We have a plethora of live presentations that um, are done by different leaders and different stylists. We will continue building new ones with the new collection, but it's not about the pieces being shown. It's about the steps and the process. That's what's most important. So you've got all that wealth at the tip of your fingertips. Okay. So thank you, Jerry, so much. You're the best. Well, thank Thanks you for all. asking me. I felt like it was all over the place, but if you took one thing that you can use, that is great. Um, mindset, give yourself grace, be your best. Don't try to be everybody else. Your life is different than my life. Your time constrictions are different. You need to realize that and, and reward yourself and praise yourself for progress because progress is really important and there's no such thing as perfection. So don't don't be don't be doing that to yourself. It's not fair to yourself. Um, and there was one last thing I was going to um, and shoot just now when you were saying that I blanked. Um, was it to recap to remember about Gucci? <laughs> no, but don't forget about Gucci. Clearly, don't forget about Gucci. No, there was something else. There was something else, and I just blanked on it. So, oh well. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jerry. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.